Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Cider Drinker Discusses. Um, this has been one that's kind of been on the cards for a little while. Um, I mentioned in a review quite a while ago that I wanted to do a little something for kind of the uninitiated people in the cider world. Not saying that, you know, no one, you know, ev everyone is always like learning day to day, isn't it? But um, more for like people that don't understand some of the terminology and some of the definitions that you might have heard in uh, some of the reviews that I've done or indeed some of the other videos that you've seen on YouTube and elsewhere. So uh, this video will be dedicated to uh, basically giving you like my best description of all these different um, types of terminology that you might have you know, come across on your journey through the cider world. Obviously, um, some of these definitions you might have already heard of before, in which case, you know, that's absolutely fine. Um, and then others you might not actually know about. So, um, you know, I mean, stick around, you know, get a drink or something, because it's probably going to be quite a long, uh, long video, this one. But what I'll do is I'll um, put, the, uh, put the different definitions in the uh, description below, so you can just jump to... Uh, jump to one that you want to, you know, have a little listen to, because there's uh, quite a few here, and I'll uh, be doing them in alphabetical order, so it's a little bit easier for you to uh, find them um, as you go along the video. But yeah, as I said, you know, put up a pull up a pew, get a drink or something, and uh, yeah, just you know, enjoy the ride, I guess. Um, so we are going to start off with the A's. There's actually only uh, one A here. And that is apple wine, or um, as you might have heard before, apple vine. Um, apple wine is essentially almost like a champagne, um, champagne style cider. Usually comes in, um, well, like champagne style, 750 ml bottles. You've probably seen uh, quite a few. Um, from like some of the reviews that I've done. Uh, the, the countries that generally do apple wines or apple vines are Germany and France. And they generally have um, a lot sweeter taste than some of the more like traditional um, dry, uh, like drier ciders out there. Um, but that the main character, the that's one of the main characteristics to look out for. If it usually comes in uh, a 750 ml um, champagne style bottle, then it is most likely going to be an apple wine rather than uh, a traditional um, cider. So, you know, I mean, keep, you know, keep an eye out for it. Apple wines, as I said, the uh, countries that do tend to do it are Germany and France, but you can get them many other places as well. Um, moving on, we have got Calvados, or as uh, some people might know it better as cider brandy. Um, Calvados is basically the French version of cider brandy. So uh, brandy is to wine as, you know, like, as, I don't know, like cider is to something, I don't know. But, but, but basically, yeah, to, what um, brandy is to grapes, cider brandy is to apples. Um, it's basically, you know, highly, um, highly concentrated um, apples, they've been highly fermented, and um, they generally have around about an ABV of about 40%. Um, so this is definitely more of a, a spirit rather than a drink that you could just have at any time. Um, once again, the, the French are very well known for doing their um, Calvados, or their cider brandies, but there are a couple of um, companies in uh, in the UK that do kind of specialise in um, cider brandies, in fact some being in Somerset, you know, Somerset Cider Brandy, you probably have uh, seen that a little bit about. Um, I think I, know, I think Once Upon a Tree does a couple of um, cider brandies. Uh, unfortunately I've not had the chance to um, actually try any cider brandies or Calvados's out, although uh, the Euston Cider Tap in London does have a few selections of Calvados and I'm actually going there this weekend, so uh, I might actually try one while I'm down there, but uh, you know, I'm you know, looking forward to trying that, so uh, yeah, Calvados, if you're not aware of that, then that is what it is, it's basically cider brandy. Next up we have, well, Cidra. You've probably heard me say this so many times before, cidre. Well, it's basically the French word for cider. Um, 
So yeah, don't, I mean, don't don't count that Stella Artois Cedra. That's not proper Cedra. And if you think it is, then you are very sorely mistaken. Because um, not only is it supposed to be a Belgian recipe, but it's actually produced in the UK anyway. So it is in no way a proper Cedra. If you want the proper Cedras, then you need to go to uh, France. And um, whereas the UK has like, you know, sweet, medium and dry, um, France has, um, du, demi-sec, and brut. So if you see that on the front of a cedra and you don't really know what it means, then brut is dry, demi-sec is basically their medium, and, um, du is, uh, their sweet. So if you didn't know that, that is another thing <laughs> to, uh, add to your collection of things that you know now. So, uh, yeah, cedra, I'm sure, um, other countries use cedra as well, um, but again, France is the main... Uh, the main country, especially Norm Normandy and Brittany. They're the two main areas uh, in France that specialise in cedra. Um, there's actually a term a little bit a little bit further down, which um, these types of cedras are very well known for, but I'll get onto that in a little bit. Next up, we have funk. No, I'm not talking about uh, the musical genre. I'm talking about, uh, like, barnyard funk. Uh, when people say that a cider has got a funkiness to it, it normally means that it's got, um, like, hints of, like, a cheesiness, maybe um, some, like, rustic, earthy, earthy notes to it. Um, even some, like, farmyard notes. Not, like, manure or anything, but, you know, like, being in a barn, basically. Uh, it sounds disgusting, but they, they generally tend to be more in the... Uh, really traditional farmhouse style ciders more than the uh, ones that you get on the shop floor. Uh, so you probably wouldn't have come across many um, ciders that would have had a traditional funky smell about them. And I'm not talking about the egginess that you get from uh, them putting too many sulfites into it. So that's not proper funk. Um, but you'll know. W when, you, when you try a cider that has funkiness to it, you will know, and uh, that's the only way that I can I can say because uh, it is it is completely different, and it will probably put off a few people because you know it won't be to everyone's liking. But if you don't try it, how are you to know? So uh, yeah, if anyone ever says a cider is funky, now you know what it is. They're not putting on their platform shoes, that's for sure. Uh, the next uh, definition is, well, I'm sure most Americans have heard this before, but hard cider. Uh, for those that don't live in the Americas, you're probably thinking, well, what is hard cider? Is it just like, you know, cider that's frozen or something? Well, no. Hard cider is basically cider. I know, sounds confusing, right? Um, but I do believe that um, in America, they call apple juice cider, and then they call actual cider hard cider. And that is the way to... Um, you know, differentiate between the two. Uh, but apart from that, there's not, not really much difference between hard cider and, like, traditional, like, UK-based ciders and everything. Um, again, I've not had many hard ciders in my time. I've only had a couple, and most of them have been the more uh, mass-produced um, ciders. I've had uh, Original Sin and I've had Angry Orchards, which um, I'm sure most um, American people out there would have either at least heard of or tried to themselves. Uh, the other main, um, like... I suppose, like, commercial hard cider is woodchuck. I see that quite a lot, a um, lot like on Twitter and everything. Uh, so I'm guessing that is one of the more, like, mainstream uh, ciders out there. I know that um, hard cider, like, really, really declined over the years, but I think it is finally, like, making a resurgence over in the Americas, and uh, more, uh, more, like, hard cider companies are making more, like, traditional, like, hand, like craft ciders so um i know that there is a lot of choice out there but if you do want to get to the good stuff then it does seem that you have to kind of search around a little bit for it but rest assured i'm sure there are some very very decent hard ciders out there um but due to like the importing laws and everything it's very hard to actually um get a hold of a bottle especially um overseas i mean it's bad enough doing it state by state so uh let alone you know, taking it to another country, so, um, but hopefully in the future I will get the chance to try more hard ciders out myself. Um, next up we have, well, industrial. There you go, uh, pretty much leads on to it really. Uh, whenever I say an industrial cider, I basically mean like the mass marketed, uh, mainstream ciders, you know, Balmer's, Strongbow, Magnus, Copperberg, you know, the, li the list goes on. Basically ones that are really easily, red readily available. Um, usually you can just get them in shops. And uh, they're generally quite 
bland, uninteresting, um, safe, I suppose you could call them. They're just safe, you know, safe ciders. And they're usually the most prevalent ciders, the ones that uh, people have had the most of. And uh, unfortunately, some of them you will have had and probably think that, you know, all cider is like that. But um, I've said before in other videos, you know, um, De definitely like broaden your horizons out a little bit because um, you know it's not all about the strong bows out there uh, <laughs> uh, but there are worse tasting ciders out there than Strongbow. I've had quite a few in my time. Um, but yeah, if I ever do say an industrially made cider, you know what that means. Basically, it's, it's all been like put into huge vats and it's been uh, like concentrated down and all, all stuff's been added into it to preserve it longer um, because it's, you know, being put on supermarket shelves for God knows how long. Uh, so yeah, that's what industrial means. It's basically like mass marketed commercial ciders, really. Next, um... Unfortunately, I've not had the chance to try this particular type of cider, but I do hope I do in the near future, and that is ice cider. Um, what is ice cider, I hear you say? Well, it, it's more... It's more well known in Canada and um, more of like the colder places. It is a very, very hard cider to um, produce because you have to do it in such a small, like small period of time. Uh, and there are two kind of ways to uh, go about it. Um, you either pick the apples off and uh, like press and ferment them towards like the end of December and then leave them outside in like temperatures like minus 15 or under. And um, it kind of the, the the sugars and the juices from the apples separate uh, from the water, and it's this small amount of uh, fermented juice at the bottom that is um, extracted, and uh, that is turned into ice cider. Or the ev the even harder way is to just leave the apples on the trees um, all throughout the winter until they like naturally fall off. Um, there are only there are very few apple varieties that actually stay on the trees throughout the winter uh, so people that actually do make ice cider I really um you know I really do like look up to them because you know it's a very very hard process to do for sure I know there is I, 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 do you know what I think Sanford Orchards um, is one of the few UK based companies that actually make an ice cider um, I know Once Upon a Tree also makes an ice cider as well. Um, but the general characteristics of an ice cider is it is a lot sweeter um, like uh, than, you know, a traditional cider. It's more like a dessert wine rather than a proper, like, drink. And it usually ranges from, like, around, like, 8 to 14% ABV, depending on... Um, you know, the, you know how it's been fermented and how long it's been fermented for. Um, but as I said, I've not got the chance to try out um, an ice cider because, as I said, it is really, really hard to come by, especially in this country. Um, but if you ever do see an ice cider, then, you know, check it out and at least you know, you know, the pro briefly the process that it's been made from. And, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, I, j I just hope I get the chance to try one in the near future. Next is uh, another process which, um, you know, you might not know of, and that is keeving. Uh, keeving, again, is um, more more for, like, the um, like the French-style cedras. They do a lot of keeving. And um, it is kind of a hard process to explain, but it's basically... You, you need to know about the process of cider making in order to know about the keeving process. Because if you ferment... Um, apples for too long then uh, it it starts to like kind of break down and it kind of turns into well the, like the traditional like dry uh, the dry style ciders that you might have tried before in the past but um, keeving like leaves a brown gel almost like gel like um, sludge on the top I suppose you could call it which the French call um, brown hat uh, the brown hat um, and basically it's just where, where the, um, the, like, the pe pectin is, like, slowly, like, released into the juice, into the, into, like, the uh, fermenting apple juice, and it's, again, a small quantity that's, um, produced, uh, like, extracted from that, and that you leave, like, the, the brown hat at the top, because you wouldn't, really wouldn't want to, you know, you really wouldn't want to try that, um, and it generally leaves the, uh, the, um, the juice to be a lot more sweeter than uh, normally is because 
it's kind of the only way to add sweetness to a cider without actually adding sugars into it. Because um, you have probably tried uh, a cider before and gone, how have they made it sweet without actually adding sugars into it? And generally, the way they do it is through the keeving process um, to basically stop it from becoming too dry. Obviously, um, you know, I don't know much about like keeving, but that is as you know, that's as much as I do know, and I know that it is. Uh, a a pretty hard process to do so anyone that does do keeving which i know the uh, the french do quite well as well then um you know again i look up to them i really do so uh that's a brief like overview of keeving um next up we have pomo now i have actually tried a pomo before in the used inside the tap and it's basically the middle step from cider to cider brandy um it, it, it's basically a mixture of cider and cider brandy, or like Calvados. So it's not quite as strong as a um, cider brandy, but it's definitely a lot, a lot stronger than a traditional cider. It's more like in like the uh, 12 to 14% ABV style, maybe even stronger. Um, but it's kind of almost like, well, like an apple wine, but um, apple wines are a little bit less, like less in the strength sometimes. Uh, but yeah, Pomo is, very very smooth the one that i tried in the uh, cider tap uh used in cider tap um it's it, it just go it, it yeah it just goes down so smoothly it's like drinking liquid velvet almost um and it's generally used more as an uh, aperitif before dinners and um you know dinners and things like that uh it's definitely not one to you know just pour a pint out and drink it because it'll be far too strong it is to be enjoyed over a, you know, a long period of time, um, you know, small quantities at the most. Uh, so, yeah, if you ever do see Pomo uh, on, the, on the front of a bottle, then that is basically it. It's like the middle step up from, like, from cider, Pomo, and then cider brandy or Calvados at the top there. Next up is a word that you've probably seen a lot of times, and that is premium. And I think the word premium has lost... Well, it's basically lost its meaning, really. Because uh, when you think of premium, you think of, like, a top-quality product. You think it's going to be, like, you know, the best out there. But unfortunately, it does seem that the word premium is just bandied about so much now on ciders that um, it kind of means the other thing. You normally see it more on the, like, the crap, cheap, um, mass-marketed ciders rather than the proper, like, proper quality ciders out there. Um, and I think some people get misconstrued with that because they see that word and they think, oh, it must be really good. And then they try it and they're wholeheartedly disappointed. And they think, well, if that's what cider is supposed to taste like, then I'm not going to, you know, have any more of it. Um, so if you do ever see the word premium on the front of a bottle, then by all means, you know, try it out. But go in with a hint of trepidation because it probably won't be as premium as you think. And uh, kind of leading on to that is real, real cider. Um, whenever people talk about real cider, it's kind of a, a controversial word, really, because someone's take on a real cider might be different to another person's take on real cider. But the way that I see it, real cider is basically cider that's been made with 100% apples and nothing else simple um i know that uh, most companies add sulfites uh, into their ciders to preserve the freshness and some people might think that that doesn't constitute it being a real cider um but i suppose if you think about it they've got to preserve the cider somehow otherwise they will only be good for a few days maybe maybe a couple of weeks if you're lucky um so i do still class like real ciders that have had sulfites added into them um you know, to still be real ciders. I mean, they do need to, you know, preserve them somehow. Some people also say that filtering ciders uh, stops them from becoming real ciders. You know, real ciders are like supposed to be proper, cloudy, unfiltered um, ciders. But most companies do tend to filter their ciders now. Um, but does that stop it being a real cider? Who knows? I'll, I'll leave that up for you guys to decide um, because one person's take on real will be completely different to another one's. So uh, there you go, real cider. Uh, next up is Sidra. 
Um, I've had a couple of Spanish Sidras before, and again, this is the uh, Spanish version of Cider. Uh, the difference between Sidra and Cider, though, is quite different. Sidra tends to be a lot more acidic than um, traditional, like, UK-based ciders. Um, and that's just generally from the way that they've been fermented and from the um, apple varieties that, um, you know, the companies use over there. Uh, it... It's def definitely not going to be for everybody. If you don't like your sour, tart, astringent, acidic ciders, then Sidra won't be the drink for you. So um, if you do see a Sidra and uh, you're wondering what it is and you don't know what it tastes like, then steer clear from it if you're more akin to like a, you know, a sweet style cider, like a Sidra or a Keeved cider. Um, so yeah, you know, there you go. If you have never tried a cider before, then that's kind of what to expect. Next up, uh, we have another cider type, and that is Scrumpy. This is, um, most people say this is the most traditional style of cider that you can get, because it is proper, unfermented, <coughs> excuse me, unfermented, uh, unfiltered, well, unfermented, what am I talking about? Um, unfiltered, I meant to say. Unfiltered, cloudy, rustic. Generally a lot stronger than um, some other ciders, usually between like 6 to 8% ABV. Uh, and you get some really like earthy, rough notes, um, kind of like the ciders that put uh, hairs on your chest. Uh, so if you do see Scrumpy and you've not tried one before, then um, you know, prepare to have your mind blown, let's just say that. And kind of leading on to that is the word tannin. You've probably heard me say that quite a lot before, um, tannin. It's not really... It, it's it's kind of a thing that's just in all apples, I guess. Tannin is a compound that gives the ciders more of um, a, a bitter... Uh, like a, a bitter, dry um, note to it. Um, sometimes it gives it a little bit of a, a chalky, bitty uh, texture behind it. Um, and generally you see this in more scrumpies, um, unfiltered, uh, rustic ciders, even some uh, vintages. Um, have tannins to them. You wouldn't see it in, um, say, like a Keeved cider because it has absolutely no tannins in it at all. In fact, most um, Sidras probably don't have tannins in them. Um, but with the UK, like the UK based um, companies, tannins are definitely a lot more uh, prominent. But definitely, uh, yeah, it's, de it's definitely more like a UK based thing, I'd say, rather than um, the rest. I'm sure the re other countries do have tannic ciders, but I think the UK. It's like the king of tannins. But, um, you know, if, if you ever do hear the word tannin, then at least you know what it is. It's more like the taste and the texture rather than it being an actual thing, you know, that you might see in, you know, in a cider. And uh, lastly, kind of leading on to that, is the word vintage. Um, again, this kind of is a little bit misleading, um, like premium is. Because you think vintage, when you when you hear of vintage wine, it's probably like dating back to like, you know, the 1600s. It's been aged in, you know, all these different types of barrels and it's, um, you know, really rare and stuff. Uh, vintage kind of isn't like that. Vintage basically is like the pick of that, um, of that harvest's crop that is used to make, um, you know, a, de a more, a stronger more robust rustic style cider so it doesn't necessarily mean that it is like years and years old um because you can get like i mean it's 2016 now but you'll be able to get like 2015 vintages um and that is just basically because you know it is like the the real cream of the crop you know excuse the pun but it's just like the the apple the apples that have been like saved to make you know a much stronger kind of tastier drink I suppose you could say. Um, I do like my vintages. Um, I mean one of my favourites is uh, Henry Weston's vintage and that's one that you get on the shop shelves. I know uh, some people say that Henry Weston's isn't a real cider company but uh, that just goes to show you that um, you know some of these companies they do make really really good drinks. So um, yeah if you do see a vintage it usually isn't below 7% and if it is then you do have to wonder if it is actually a proper vintage cider. Uh, so there we go, that's just my little insight into some of the cider definitions out there. I'm sure there's some that I've missed. Um, 
and also I don't profess to know everything because I don't. Um, this is just ba this is just basically a video to let you guys know, you know, my take on some of the, you know, definitions out there, and I hope that you've learned a little bit about it, uh, about some of like the definitions and everything. Because well, until recently, I didn't know what some of them were. Uh, so yeah, there we go. That is another cider drinker discusses. Once again, I hope you liked it, and I'll see you on the next cider drinker cider review. So until then. Take care, guys. Until next time.